In the late 1970s, the moose population of Saskatchewan's so-called Cumberland Delta was at an all-time high of two animals per square kilometre. The Delta, properly called the Saskatchewan River Delta, is the largest such delta in North America. It covers an area of some 10,000 square kilometres and straddles the Saskatchewan and Manitoba border at about 60 degrees of latitude. On the southern edge of the delta, at the junction of highways 55 and 9, there used to be a small motel called Bainbridge Lodge. And it was here that I joined a team of biologists, led by Bob Stewart from the Saskatchewan Department of Natural Resources, to carry out a long-term moose research study. My first job each morning was to fill some darts. I used a combination of a potent morphine-like drug and a cattle sedative and had to make up a set of darts to deal with the various size of animals that we might encounter. Then it was off to the Jet Ranger on the search for study subjects. We worked in the area marked on this section of the map. With such a high density of moose in the area, it did not take long to find a study subject. The key was to work closely with pilot Cliff Thompson and get into position above and slightly to one side of the animal so that I could be sure of a good shot into heavy muscles. Here you see the dart hit the thigh and almost at once we climbed to watch how things develop. At first there's no change. Then the animal begins to slow right down and go into a collected trotting gait, a bit like a dressage horse. Based on 10 years of experience of the capture of a wide variety of African animals from rhino to elephants to antelopes, I knew that at a critical point one could approach them and put ropes on or lead them around. So at this point I figured it would be possible to get out of the chopper and walk up to the moose to lead it into an open area where we could process it and the helicopter could weigh it. The major challenge was not the moose but the depth of the snow and at times the heavy brush which is much easier for a long-legged moose than a mere human to wade through. However, the moose has one useful extra feature. It has a flap of skin called the bell that hangs under the chin and we could use this to pull it along towards a nearby clearing. Once in the open we could pull the animal down and get to work, although this was sometimes more difficult than at others. Bob and technician Don McInnes struggled with a big bull. While we worked on the animal with the helicopter noise off for the time being, it was a joy to listen to the winter silence and talk rather than shout above the engine noise as we took body measurements like leg length and heart girth, put on the radio collar and collected samples including blood for health and disease studies before inserting an ear tag. We used old webbing strips, rivets and ropes to make a sling to put under the animal to weigh it and cut poles from aspen trees to thread into loops on the sides. In this shot, Bob Stewart took the role of hook man to join the scale to the moose. The combined downdraft of the blades and minus 20 temperatures presented their own challenges and gave a whole new meaning to the term wind chill. Getting the weight gave us a whole lot more information about the condition of the animals and also allowed other moose biologists to use body measurements like the ones we took to calculate a weight if they did not have a scale. With the weight recorded, Bob could relay a signal to Don and he would pass it on to Cliff who could let the animal down gently.
as the helicopter left, I quickly filled up a syringe with antidote, while Bob and the crew removed the sling. Within a minute or so, the antidote had done its thing and the animal was alert, up and away. Sometimes the up was not followed by away and as cameraman I nearly got mown down on a couple of occasions. The walking with moose technique was something new for moose biologists in the 1970s but it did allow us to study these charismatic creatures and learn more about them and their lives in their natural habitat. Stories about this research and other accounts of my experiences with moose are told in my new book of Moose and Men, a Glasgow vet in Canada. <laughs>